ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another video. We got a jam-packed episode today. So we got an update on the completion of the last video's up, uh, unboxing. Got an update on that. And we got a couple unboxings from the old Christmas money. And then today I was at the Tri-State Fishing and Outdoor Sale here in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. So I'm gonna show you what I got from that as well. Stay tuned. So don't mind the mess, still hasn't fully cleaned up the garage yet from the install and just what I need to do the garage, get all the holidays, get all that stuff put away. Not fully clean yet, but we got this all done. So we got the old tracks mounted, which you saw in the last video, transducer, the Garmin was already mounted, but we didn't have this fixed. We didn't have this mounted. We didn't have anything else done. So we got, re-ran the wire to the connector. We got the shell installed. I like how clean it looks. I gave myself a little slack. I probably still give it more. I'm liking that a lot. Um, for my cables coming from the Ultrex, I kind of just slipped them through this little crack right here before they go into the shell. Um, I might change how this is laid out. Um, I might make these come down to the end and then come over. I haven't fully decided, but uh, bought this wrap from Bass Pro. I think like 6,000 companies make one, but Bass Pro made one. It was on sale, picked it up. It seemed like a really nice uh, neoprene. Uh, the Velcro seems like a really, actually pretty good quality Velcro, so we'll see how long that lasts. But, got the Garmin all mounted. I got it all set up. Uh, it's 7 forward in forward mode. It's probably all I'll use it for. Uh, we got our Amp Marine uh, cables. Let me see, I got it wrapped up and over. That was the only thing I couldn't really figure out on the old YouTube was how much clearance to have up here. So I'll probably play with that once I go. Uh, you can see I haven't got my rod thing over there. I haven't got that mounted yet. I do need to buy a little cup to go on the floor. Um, but that's all mounted. And then the black box is of course mounted in here. Got the new puck reinstalled here. Um, but that's really it for that. So let's get into the unboxing part. So of course, right after Christmas, you get, with me and my age now, being older, I don't get cool gifts anymore. So I get money and gift cards. So decided to take some of that money and pick up a couple uh, fishing products that were still running some deals. So we got an unboxing from Tucker Warehouse, the Sixth Sense with a brand new bait. I'm really excited to use this year. American Legacy and what I picked up from the Tri-State Fishing Sale. So let's start with Tucker Warehouse. So I, I am not a big fan of Bass Mafia. Really don't like their product at all. Um, but the only box I do like are these little clear ones with these actually nice plastic lids because they hold up a little bit better. Um, but they had a sale in these 1800s um, or 3500s, whatever they label it as. And they marked them down to like nine bucks. Uh, this is last year's generation. They redid the models now. Uh, but I've been seeing some People have been rocking these, and this used to be like their tube box or shaky head box. So that kind of got my wheels turning because I have a big 3700, and I'm oh, I have two of them, sorry, two 3700s, and I'm always grabbing the wrong box for a tube head, a shaky head, a wobble head, or whatever. So I went ahead and picked some up so I can maybe organize a little bit better. So the goal is, is that they'll just sit in the boat like this, put a label right here. So if I want a shaky head, I'll probably put shaky and tube heads together. Those are my least amount. I only run like two different types on each um, and go through that a that way. Uh, so, but I think it's gonna work perfectly because the middle of these red ones are not pull outs, but you can pull the clear out. So I think that's gonna be work perfect for all my shakies, uh, swim bait hooks. I'm probably gonna do one for like all my finesse heads and then all my traditional ones. Uh, so I bought five of these. Um, I really want to get more edge boxes um, because I really, really like the Plano Edge. I think they're a fantastic product. I think the lids are a little, should be a little bit tighter, but that's my dumb opinion. So picked up some of those. We're going to try them out and see how we like them. We don't. I'll just go back to the two big 3700s. Uh, but also picked up, been seeing these Core Tackle, um, US made, and these are called the Ultimate swim bait hook, the Hush series, is designed for bigger swim baits. So these are seven aught quarter out ah, or quarter ounce, sorry. So these are supposed to kind of go like inside, and then all you see is this part and the top of the blade. 
So I thought that was a pretty cool uh, idea. So I went ahead and grabbed one of those. They were on sale, like 10% off or something. So I grabbed one of those, try it to see how we do. And I've been thinking about it for a while. It's been out for a very long time. So I finally pulled the, pulled the trigger on that one. So I got one of the River to Sea Tactical DD Cranks. Um, been wanting to try one of these in the springtime. Apparently for speed cranking it's the deal. Um, I did a little bit of speed cranking last year. I do agree with them with the pausing. I traditionally, if you watch some of my crankbait videos when I'm reeling, I'll just kind of slow my cadence down. I'll pop my rod, just do one pop. And then I'll start speeding up. There's a ton of times after that pop, I got hit. So this is more of a winter crank. I think it's like down to like, I think they say like 15 foot or something like that. So um, they don't say the, they don't say the depth, but they always talk about if you have 10, 12 pound on your cranking sticks, you can get it on 15. I got a DC, so I know I can sling this out far enough. So uh, what color is this one? Silver minnow or something? True shad. And to me, it looks like shad birds from Sixth Sense. I have, a, I have a lot of confidence in that color scheme. So picked one up to try it. Um, we'll see how it does. If it, I like it, I'll pick up a couple more. Uh, so let's go to Six Cents next. So once again, Six Cents was running a little bit, little bit of a sale right after Christmas. So went ahead and snagged some couple baits up that I realized I didn't order on my Black Friday sale because I'm dumb. So we're gonna show those off. So I picked up a slice, but I realized I didn't pick up the gold reactor. I picked up no shad profiles. How? How, how can you not do that? You have crawl, you have gold reactor, but no shads. Don't worry. Got that fixed. So now we got two of the slice. These are the three eighths, uh, two inch. So they're perfect. You can throw them on a medium power casting rod. I'm really thinking throwing on that Sierra 703 spinning rod. I love that rod. It's a little bit softer tip. So throwing a three eighths is gonna load up real good. I can sing it to the moon. If not, any medium power, medium heavy, lighter medium heavy rods are gonna do just fine. And of course, they got the BKK hooks on them, so they're gonna be stuck for a while. And then, I wasn't able to order these when they first came out. They're in stock, so I picked them up. It's the Paramara, or Param, Parama, however the hell you say it. And this is a three and a half inch, 4K shad, or whatever they're called. To me, it's like 4K shad, or real shad. Oh yeah, 4K shad. So, Super excited. I think these look super cool. Super cool idea Sixth Sense did with these. Um, so I'm gonna try these. Mainly gonna be on drop shots is my goal. Or I've thought about picking up some, uh, maybe like 1 16th ounce heads or something, some smaller or just straight uh, weedless uh, hooks and flip it out and let it just kind of float. Kind of thing, maybe a different variety than the uh, normal flush. Uh, but super cool with those. So I picked those up to try this year. And then the whole reason that I bought the Tush, those little heads, is because of these. Six Cents came out with the six inch whale. And if you notice, if you can see it all, they put little eyes on them. And it's not a big deal, you just glue some eyes on, but they came with them. So I went ahead and I was like, why don't I get some Tush, put it in this, and I can throw it around. Uh, so I bought a quarter ounce, mainly for shallow water. And of course, I picked up my favorite swim bait color of the Six Sense Pro Blue. Love that color. And then I realized on the sale, I didn't pick up more A rigs. I'm just so dumb. So restock on A rigs. Now, the last bait. Everyone's waiting for them. I've been waiting for them, even though I don't throw big swim baits. But the Hangover finally dropped on Six Sense. So I went over there, grabbed one. Took them a while to get it to me. I understand some people were getting pissed off about it, but I understand it's a new bait. A lot of people are buying them. So I went with the slow model, two and a half ounce. Uh, from what Milliken said, from watching his video, if you ever watched his video, check it out on the hangover. He explains how fast to reel it, why you use each type of model, and all that fun stuff, rod, reel, all that. So I watched it. The slow seemed like the best from what I want to use. I'm probably going to pick up a fast as well. Um, down the road, but I picked Pro Blue. Once again, it looks like the Pro Blue we just showed. Um, I have a lot of confidence in that color, especially in cleaner water. So I picked one up. Uh, I think he says a BKK hook, one odd or something like that, or number one. So we're gonna try this out in the spring. Um, 
trying to these bigger swim baits out so i bought a couple more um but i don't have the most confidence so we'll see how we do this year um let's get to american legacy now and see what we got from there so once again american legacy was running their sales up to new year's eve and i was looking through the website and they had owner stuff for 30 percent off and i'm dumb i didn't know they made it a ewg nethead take the best hook in the market and you put it on the best net head outside of just a plain old net head, slam them together, it's gotta be good. So it's a one eighth, one aught. It's a little four pack of them. Super excited for these. Um, I like the shank, they call it the Z lock. I like the shank and how dropped that is. So I do believe they're right. It probably will hold up plastics really well. We will see after a couple of those bluegills start mounting on them. So I picked up a couple more line from Sunline. Uh, everyone knows I'm a big fan of Sunlight's Fluoro. Haven't been a fan of the braid yet. I tried the XX1 last year, hated it. Uh, but they came out with a new braid and it's called the Sunline Overwatch. It's an eight strand, love eight strand braid, uh, but it's metered. So let me just read off. It says it's 12 inches of chartreuse braid and 30 inches of green braid. If you can see that well. Uh, once I get it spooled up in the spring, I'll show it better. Uh, so once again, shallow water, stone of Cinco. I'm trying to push myself to use brighter braid so I will be able to see the bites a little better in the braid part and not just trying to feel the bite. So I think I lost some fish last year or lost the initial bite because I didn't have bright braid. I'm looking at moss green braid trying to see a bite. So I saw they had this. A bunch of companies make this type of braid. It's nothing revolutionary, but Sunlight came out with it, so I'm gonna try it. If it doesn't work, I'll just go back to Suffix and be perfectly fine. So I saw it, I wanna try it, and that's uh, 16 pounds, 125 yards. And so also, Sunline copied Seagram, Seagar last year when they came out with a basic cheap fluorocarbon for starters. So I know on my channel, I use a lot of more expensive line. I do have a lot of nice combos, but I did kind of want to put a combo together that is a lot more feasible for most people, that like $200 price point. So let me show you the combo I'm talking about. So I've had this Dobbins Colt for about four or five months, bought in September. It was on sale at Academy for like 20 bucks. Their lists normally were 75 bucks. They got discontinued. But it's a seven foot, four power, heavy. So it's a normally an $80 rod. And while I was at Bass Pro, I was able to get a Revo X pretty cheap. So the whole combo, we're still under 200 bucks. We're about 200 bucks. So I wanted to have a combo that's around a that $200 price point that anyone can go pick up. I know the Colt series is discontinued, but whatever $80 rod you like, or $100 rod, you can pick it up. I think the Revo X are about 120, 110. Just wait for a sale like I do. So my idea was take this combo and put on Sunline Model FC. This is their new basic entry-level fluorocarbon. So I'm gonna spool these two up in the springtime. The goal for that rod is throw braid in the summer. I'm gonna use it for my smaller frogs, buzz baits. I can tie a leader in, throw other stuff. So that rod's gonna have braid in the, in the summertime, but in the spring, I want to see how this does. I want to see how that new Revo X does too, the new Revos. So this is entry-level. It's 110 yards for 15 pounds. This stuff is fairly cheap. I mean, I got it on sale and I think I paid like eight bucks for it, but I think the list price is like $10, $11, something like that. It's way cheaper. I run mainly a SAS or a FC Sniper and that stuff just keeps going up and up and up in price. It's like $25 now. So I'm actually really intrigued to see how this does and see if I can find a technique for it. Like Assassin to me, it's $20 spool line. A little bit softer. I kind of like that for a crank and moving baits. It feels like I got a little bit, it's hard to explain, it just feels a little bit softer. It looks like I got a little bit more give to it. So I'm really excited to see how this does sitting on my pole. I'll probably fish for a week, let it sit for a couple weeks and see how the spiring starts, how much it coils up and then compare it to my other lines. I'm expecting a lot more coiling because it's cheaper. But I saw that, I wanted to try it to see if there is a cheaper line out there and I can just kind of throw on for every couple of weeks and then it's not a big of a deal. If I blow up my reel up, I waste $8 instead of $20.
And of course, they still had Beast Coast on sale, so had to pick up some more of the baby dozers. Uh, color I didn't pick up last year on my restock was the Stealth PB and J, and it is just so good. Super nice, awesome BKK hook. Says it five eighths on the side, bumps makes it a lot easier to fill the bumps real well. Um, so pick those up. Really excited to try those out in the springtime. And I got two of those. So I also got a restock on the flushes. Uh, one, a couple more green, bluegill cut colors. So I got blue, baby bluegill, green pumpkin juice. You can tell, notice there's one missing. I buy the clamshells because they don't bend the tails, but the package came bent. So super disappointing, but I'll let Sixth Sense know. They usually take care of it. If I tell them, hey, bought a beta package, here's a day, they'll usually take care of it. But that's green pumpkin juice. You guys see it in the clout. I love that color. It looks like green pumpkin. And then Sixth Sense grabbed every flake they had, threw it in the batch. I don't know why, but they love it. I really have a lot of confidence in the clout this way, the uh, hog walla, and of course the prawn. So super excited for that. And that bluegill baby, bluegill, baby bluegill, yeah, has that orange belly. So I'm really expecting that to be a good player for me this year as well. And the last thing we got from American Legacy, they were still running Dobbins deals, so I got another Dobbins Rods. Come here, come here. Don't tell my wife. Thank you, appreciate it. So looking through the Rod series, and I remember they made a Panfish Rod in the Sierra series. So I picked up the seven foot ultralight. Oh, it's a seven foot rod ultralight, and that's their Panfish and Trout Rod. But I don't really want to full panfish rod in my locker at all time. I, I can use that for my another Sierra. So what, what can I do? Like, what can I do to always have the rod with me? So they make them in two piece rods. So now I can put the rod in my box, tape it up, whatever I need to do, rubber band it, put a rod sock on it, whatever. And now I have my panfish rod with me at all times. I don't know why I never thought of this sooner because there's been a lot of days out there I'm struggling and I just grab my medium light spinning rod and go fish for panfish. Now I can just grab my Sierra out of my locker, put it together real quick. Make sure nice and tight, make sure the guides are Pretty close. I need that popped to the side a little bit. And there you go. Now I can go fish for panfish if I'm getting my butt kicked on bass. And then real, my buddy, Cousins Fishing, I'll link his channel below. Uh, he gave me his old Daiwa Regal. Daiwa Regal. It's a 2,000 size reel. I just don't use a lot of 2,000 size reels for my daily fishing. I use a lot of 3,000 and bigger. Um, so Went ahead and was like, well, I'm really used for it. Let's put on those panfish rods. So I'm gonna probably do like 10 pound braid to four pound, five pound liter material. But I am super excited for this. Already U40 to cork. Make sure you're U40, excuse me. Make sure you're U40 your cork to make it last as long as possible. But I'm really excited to try this rod out today, this year, and to see how it goes. So now I'm gonna show you what we got from the Tri-State Fishing Expo cell expo event over in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. They used to do this expo before COVID and since COVID they haven't really done it. So I was really happy to see it back. I was really happy to go today. Um, so first person I bought some stuff from is from Pro Tungsten. Got to meet the owner Paul today. Super cool guy. Super happy with everything that he is bringing to the table for the Tungsten wise. Um, his little box he put together. It says worm weights. I took most of the worm weights out. We He was able to swap the, the worm weights out for flipping weights. But these kind of look like those Gamagachi boxes. I'm pretty happy. I'm just gonna put in my Plano box. But so, but bunch of tungsten in here. Uh, I got half ounce in the flipping weight, 5 16 quarter, and I think 3 8 Yeah, and 3 8 all green pumpkin. I mainly just run green pumpkin. I do run black weights once in a while or pitch black. Uh, but I got plenty of those from the Sixth Sense a couple years back. So 
trying them out. And then, hey, he also, we got some worm weights, the 3 16 and the 1 8 ounce. Um, pretty happy. Uh, looked at the weights, looked, felt them. Uh, he says they're no chip, but they uh, seem like pretty good quality. And he's not charging, you know, an arm and a leg for them. So we're going to try them out this year, see how we do. And if uh, they work well and don't chip up, I'll probably just go back and buy more. Uh, he was super cool. He's based out of uh, Waterloo, Illinois. He's got a website. I'll post, I'll put that in the description. Check him out, smaller business. So I know I threw, I showed off my big divine. He also sells, which he works with a company called Seller Baits. He makes little A rigs. They're actually four inch, not six and a half. But I really was really digging them. They actually call them the kayak rig. So let me pull one out. I am really intrigued with it because the reason it clicked to me was there was Tactical Bassin just talked about how they came out with a new A rig. And I forget what they call it. I think they call it a micro rig to throw on bait caster, like just normal bait casters. So my little brain starts thinking, I'm like, I could probably throw on a normal bait caster, but I like to put heavier weights on it, make it sink a little bit better. It can sit, it can sit the bottom of the water column a little bit better, mid column. But why don't I, I get a smaller rig and rig it up for normal bait casters? You know, a heavy rod, 16 pound floor on there and call it a day. So when I saw this, that was my idea. So that's the whole rig kind of like all open. Gotta bend that one over a little bit more. But that's the whole rig. I mean, it's a pretty small little rig. I'm pretty pumped. It's got the blades. I did buy two of them. I might do I might do this one bladeless and then this one blades. But I'm very, very excited. Uh, I think they look good. I was looking kind of looking through them. They look like they got some good quality. I like the tubing here that keeps these blades right where they're at. It looks like it's got some pretty nice good ball bearing swivels on there. The snaps even look like pretty good quality. I pull snaps off and use um, um, split rings anyway, but I saw them and I thought it was a cool idea. So my plan is to do like 1 16th ounce heads and then of course these would be my teasers. So I cut all this off and just put a owner uh, twist lock on there. Um, the only thing I probably don't like the most is how the head is really flat. It's probably my only takeaway, but the person who probably designed these are way better fishermen than me. So he probably did it for a reason. So we're going to take his word for it because he's way more talented than I am. So, but this is an idea I had and I saw it that he, they make some. So I went ahead and picked one up. So I'm really excited. Probably some 116 ounce, three at three inch, 2.75 rage tails. But I'm thinking some 2.75 three inch whales. I'll probably just put like a couple crappie baits up here, like two inches, like some small ones up here, and uh, throw that around. But I'm pretty excited for that, very much. Uh, but also while we're there, uh, land, land big fish. They were having some sales on some reels and rods. Um, and there's a reel I've been thinking about getting. Just didn't have a pull the trigger yet. But they got me a pretty good deal. They did some they did some day deals there. So I picked up the new Corrado M from Shimano. I was gonna get a six speed, but I got a high gear. So I went ahead and get the high gear um, because I can use it a little bit more for a little bit different techniques. Um, I think it's gonna go on the 765 crankbait rod. And I'll probably move that Crowdo 200 back to my swimbait rod. Uh, Coming talk to my buddy uh, from work and he knows some musky spots. So I think I'm gonna take that Dial Alexa and put in my old musky rod I haven't used in years. I haven't fished for muskies that often. And I think I'm gonna kinda do a little musky videos. I think that'd be kinda cool for the channel. Get a little more uh, different fish techniques on the water. So we're gonna put that over there, but I think we're gonna put this on that Corrado or uh, the Dot Dobbins 765 crankbait rod. Um, I'm probably eventually gonna sell the 765 and get a different rod. Uh, with those 734 cadence, it kind of pushed the 765 to the side. Um, I probably will throw it like these baits on that 765. But the 734s do pretty well, so I'm gonna see how the year goes. And if I decide I don't need a 765, I'll sell it. But 
pretty excited to have the M. I've been watching a lot of videos. A lot of people said they're really nice. They're kind of a pain to dial in. My Corrado 70 what kind of was, or my SLX 70 kind of was with that MGL spool. So I think it's just it's just the MGL spooling in it. Uh, but we're gonna take it apart. We're gonna clean it like we always do before we start using it. But I'm really excited to try out this uh, Corrado M. Uh, I had a K. I love my K, so I keep using it. Well, I haven't replaced it. It's great reel. So I'm pretty excited to see how the M compares to the K. But I think that's it. Um, that's all the stuff from this last unboxing. Um, but I'm super excited for all the new stuff on the, the boat. I was really looking forward to it next weekend. Um, but Mother Nature decided to be mean. So now we're having a big cold front come through. Today it kind of started. We're down, down to the 20s and 30s. And tomorrow we're supposed to be in the negatives. So, of course, once I get all this done, I'm ready to take it out and start trying it. See how I do. Start down on the graphs and everything from my videos of course it gets cold so that all the way down down the road but we got some expos coming up uh, make sure you guys check out the national fishing expo we got the columbus one in mid-february and the cincinnati one in early march please check those out i will be there so if you do see me walking around in my big old ugly face stop by and say hi i would really appreciate it i would love to sit there and talk some stop ta and tackle um, i'm always down talk about some baits talk about some rigs always down always i think it'd be really cool but if not you'll see a fishing video then so i'm hoping to have some fishing videos start kicking back up around march so that's the hope so but once again thank you for watching please like comment and subscribe and i will talk to you soon bye